Now, it is true that we don't know very much about Moses' marriage. There are some indications that it had difficulties, but we don't know very much about it. One thing, though, I think we can be sure of is that Moses never went to a marriage counselor. How do I know this? Because of the way he talks to Israel. Also, there were no marriage counselors in ancient Israel, as far as I know, but there could have been, you never know. Could have been somebody set up a tent with a sign outside, like Lucy with her lemonade, said marriage counselor for ancient Israelites. Except that if you go to a marriage counselor, any therapist about relationships, one of the first things they will tell you is, if you're having a fight, fight about what you're fighting about, not about everything that happened before. Don't say, not only did you not take out the trash today, but a year ago, you drove recklessly and wrecked the car. Don't do that. Deal with what is happening now, not with everything that ever happened. Don't turn events into traits. Don't say, not only did you not take the garbage out now, but you're completely irresponsible all the time. Just talk about what's happening at the moment. And the other thing that they will say is try your best to talk about it dispassionately. Don't throw all of your emotion into the trash can incident. Instead, say, you had done this. I wish you would do it that way. In the future, could you try to do it this way? But that's not what Moshe does. Moses tells Israel everything they ever did wrong. We went through the desert and you did this. And by the way, you did that. And God got angry at me because you did the other thing. And it is a litany of misdeeds by the Israelites. Now, to be fair, the Israelites gave Moshe a really hard time. And this is 40 years in the desert. This isn't like a trash can on Tuesday morning in Westwood. So we can understand the resentment that Moshe feels. And yet at the same time, at first glance, and I emphasize at first glance because we're going to redeem Moshe in just a minute. At first glance, this is a very bad strategy to tell people how terrible they are right before they go into the land of Israel. But of course, that's not really the strategy. Moshe and God, God and Moshe, and it's hard sometimes to know who's contributing which part. They're doing something that I actually learned from a member of the congregation. I'm gonna give him credit. It was Arnie Gilbert, Dr. Gilbert. And it's called the Harvard Sandwich. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Harvard Sandwich is, it is a very useful life skill. And I'm now going to tell you about it with reference to the Parsha. When you're criticizing an employee, or a spouse, or a child, you don't start out with the criticism. You don't begin by saying, you know Goodnick who never takes out the trash. Next week, take out the trash. Bad strategy. You start off by talking about their virtues. You know, you're a great employee. You do this and this and this and this, and it's wonderful. Once you've talked about their virtues, then you talk about what they did wrong. But you know, you keep coming in late. And that's dispiriting to the rest of the team. And then, this is why it's the Harvard sandwich, you go back to their virtues and say that because they have those virtues, you know they'll be able to remedy the fault. Because you're such a wonderful team member, I know that you will in the future try to come in on time because that's the kind of person you are. And if you look at the Parsha carefully, this is what Moshe is doing. 
What did we read at the very end of Ve'et Hanan last week? It's not because you're the most numerous of peoples that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you. Indeed, you're the smallest of peoples, but the Lord loved you. So Moshe starts by letting the people know that they are loved, that they are special, that they're cared for by God. And then Moshe says, and by the way, you lovely people, you did this and this with the golden calf and the manna and the Korach rebellion and on and on and on and on and on. Once Moshe is done telling them everything they did wrong, then he says, but when you go into the new land, do this. Do this. Love the Lord your God. Because if you do that, and I know you can, then you will be a success in the land. So the strategy here is not actually, even though at first glance it may seem, the strategy is not tell the Israelites everything they did wrong. It's a mess. No, the strategy is tell them they are special. Explain to them how they have violated their specialness and end by telling them that you know that they can validate the specialness you see in them by going into the land and being the people that you want them to be. I can't say it was 100% successful. When the Israelites went into the land, they still did a few things wrong. But it is a beautiful thing to see how Moshe mixes praise and criticism and promise of the future all together. I've quoted it before, but it's such a beautiful thing, I will quote it again, that Avram Tversky, the Hasidic rabbi who actually just passed away, who started the Jewish 12-step program. He was a psychiatrist and a rabbi. And I once heard him say how his father used to criticize him when he was a kid. His father wouldn't say what you did was bad or you're bad or any of those things. He would say, Avram, what you did is not worthy of you. In other words, he reaffirmed his specialness at the same time that he criticized him. It's not worthy of you. And that's what Moshe is saying to the Israelites. The way you're acting is not worthy of you. If I got to say one sentence to our nation at this moment of division and anger and argument, I would say all across the board, the way we're acting, it's not worthy of us. We're better than this. We have serious disagreements, but we can settle them by discussion, not by yelling and not by insult. We should listen to Moshe and to Avram Tversky's father. We are better than this. And because I believe in us, I think we'll prove it. Shabbat Shalom. We continue on page 200.